Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We'll be coming from three different places, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Psalms today. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for these scriptures that are just so perfect, God. They, they come for the times, Lord God. They come for your servants, Lord God. They are the warning. They are everything we need right now. Thank you for giving us a word. Thank you for keeping us up to date. You're better than any news or number um, news system. You're better than any anything that we could create with our own hands. You are the early warning system, God. You're everything. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Bless your servants who are listening, God. Give them a special ear today to hear. Give them a, a wise and, and great great understanding to apply this word in their lives and know how to conduct themselves during these last hours. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. So it seems like a lot of verses today, but it's it's really not. Um, it it kind of goes quickly, but it is so on point because all three of these go together. I could hear him saying the three numbers over and over again to me while I was doing other things this morning. And it was like he was really trying to download some things for me. So um, for us to hear. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we'll start out with Isaiah 64 verses one and two. All right. So it says verse one. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence. Oh, Lord, this is such a perfect, you know, for what we're living in, what we're going through. Isaiah 64, we've, I want to say we've had this one before, but just that God would rend the heavens. He's about to rend the heavens. He's about to tear it apart and open it up, right? Just because we haven't seen it before, it doesn't mean it will not happen. And I was listening to someone witness and he when I say he was such an effective witness, he was talking about, you know, just applying the word and, and breaking down the word. And he was so effective. And I just really want to be effective to you guys that just because you haven't seen it, just because you haven't, he was relaying what John's message was um, in the book of Revelation. And he was saying how, um, you know, in his greeting, he was trying to get them to understand that just, I understand that you guys have not experienced Jesus. He was saying, I understand that, you know, like it, it's hard to understand, but I live this, you know, I walked with Jesus. I knew him. He was a man. And he really did come and he really did stop time. And he really was the son of God. And he was trying to relay this to people who maybe did not have an understanding. And he knew that this letter would go forth throughout time. And he was just, you know, like, hey, this really did happen. And I need you guys to understand that this happened. So um, here it's saying, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountain might wake at your presence. We don't have an understanding of things like this, right? We've never had a mountain quake necessarily before us. Yeah, maybe an earthquake or a volcano eruption. But when he's saying that he's going to rend the heavens and come down, that means he's going to tear apart the atmosphere and we don't have a concept of it. The only thing we know is it's cool movies that we see on TV, you know, oh, that's so cool. And then we move on. It, it's it's make believe to us that anything could ever happen, but it's not make believe. It is true. It is real. The earth is about to see something. The, the sky and the heavens above us are about to be rend, right, torn asunder, torn up, and he's going to come down, right? His mighty presence is about to descend on the mountain. The prophets are calling out. The people are calling out. The dreams are being poured out. The visions are being poured out. And and the heavens are about to be rent, but people just, oh, they're so desensitized to everything. Oh, all the movies, all the all the penetration of the world into their minds, it, it it's hard to conceptualize and say that this, no, this is really going to happen, but it really is going to happen. It says, oh, that 
you would rend the heavens and come down that the mountains might quake at your presence. Verse two, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries and that the nations might tremble at your presence. So it says, as when the fire kindles the brushwood and the fire causes the water to boil. So he's saying that there's some sort of fuel going in and it's catching a fire, right? Something is catching. So when God's presence comes, when he rends the heavens, when he comes down in the mighty quake and he he descends on this earth, it's going to cause a fire, right? Something is going to catch a fire. Something is going to be kindled, right? Like brushwood. So this this brush this 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 thing that is going to fuel the fire it's going to catch right like uh, we we always read the book of revelation and we studied about it um about how when when god um when this thing starts to happen you know babylon is going to go up in smoke right it, it is going to be completely completely consumed right so it's gonna catch on fire so it says as when the fire kindles the brushwood and the fire causes water to boil I don't know if you guys know the concept of boiling water but heat is added right you add heat and and it, it boils only when it's reached a certain point right and it um I'm not going to get all into the science of it because I love the science of boiling water I know that sounds so crazy well I'll tell you guys at least a little bit that when you're boiling water you're adding heat to um something a vessel that has water in it but as you're measuring the water temperature you'll notice that when you reach boiling point you keep adding heat but it flatlines right the the temperature does not change it increases 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 until it reaches a point which is the boiling point that's why they call it a point it reaches the boiling point and you continue to add heat but the temperature never changes right because it is only taking in the heat and it's causing some of the water um, structure to change and be released into the atmosphere so when that happens it's going to take on heat, but the temperature will not change. It will stay steady at that temperature until the heat of vaporization is completed. Then it will continue to rise in temperature. But once that boiling point is reached, it, that temperature monitor does not change. It flatlines. It just stays the same. And so that was like one of the most interesting concepts to me because it kind of lets you know God is real right? God is real. I can keep adding heat to this, but it doesn't change, okay? So the way that the Lord was talking to me about this, he was almost saying that's almost like what we're living in. It's almost a reflection of the times that we are living in when the sin has been heaped up and heaped up and heaped up. He's saying that we've reached the limit of that, right? We've reached that boiling point where you can keep adding, but nothing is going to change now. Now we are in this vaporization point, right? We are in this point where it, it's maximized. I've been seeing, I've told you guys about, you know, the season that we live in is 55. It's one of the, one of the, um, ways that the Lord showed me last year was the number 55. He showed me 55 over and over again. And then this season, like now, ever since the baby was born, I told you guys this, um, I saw the number 55 was the time that he um, was born and the Lord revealed to me. That's the season that we live in. But lately, you guys, these last few days, oh my goodness, I've been seeing the number 55 everywhere every time I turn around 55 55 and I've even had a vision of a huge pile of something something so huge and I asked the Lord what it was and he was saying that's the sin heaped up he says the sin is heaped up we've reached that point of vaporization we reach where there is nothing else that can change this situation you can add and add and add but it's not going to heap up anymore because it is completely heaped up it is overflowed now 
right? And and now we're only reaching, we are to the point where we're just waiting for the heavens to rend. We are waiting for that uh, vaporization point where things are going to be vaporized, right? It says, oh, that you will rend the heavens and come down that the mountains might quake at your presence. God is about to make his presence known. Some people will never accept it, right? They'll be cursing God until the end. That's what the book of Revelation says. They won't believe. They won't believe. They won't believe. But for us who do believe, now is the time of repentance. Now is the time to make our heads look up toward the heavens because this is the point that he's been warning us about. It says, as when the fire kindles the brushwood and the fire causes the water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries and that the nations might tremble at your presence. Every knee is going to bow, people. Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. The question is, when will you do it? Will you be forced to do it? Will you be forced to to recognize that Christ is Lord? Don't ever be forced. Don't ever wait till it's too late to, to truly acknowledge God's sovereignty and the fact that he is God. It says, as when the fire brush, the fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries. God is going to make his name known to his adversaries. He is going to be famous, right? Don't make him be famous by force. You should, you should, you should cause his fame now. It says to make his name known to your adversary, to make your name known to your adversaries and that the nations might tremble at your presence. We should tremble with a holy fear, a reverent fear, right? Not because we did not do the right thing in the right time. It says, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. God is about to rend the heaven and the nations will recognize. Everyone will recognize that Jesus is Lord at some point. Hopefully it won't be too late. Jeremiah 52 verse 8, but the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king and overtook Zedekiah. This is a whole nother chapter. Remember, we were in Isaiah 64 verses 1 and 2. Now we're moving on to Jeremiah 52 verse 8, but the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho and all his army was scattered from him. I'm going to go ahead and well, I'll stop right there. So this is King Zedekiah. Remember, he was a evil king and he was in the time of Jeremiah. And it says, basically, when that point came, that point of the rending of the heavens, this wasn't a physical rending of the heavens. This was a spiritual thing that was going on with King Zedekiah. Why? Because the sin had heaped up and they did not recognize God. They weren't um going after God and being holy in the way that God wanted them to be. They they were worshiping other gods and doing all sorts of things. And so this was during Zedekiah's time. It says, but the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. And all his army was scattered from him. So that thing that was supposed to protect, that thing that was supposed to keep, um, those are the things that were scattered from him, right? He, he chose not to follow and obey the Lord only. He chose other gods. He chose the people and what the people wanted. And because of that, he paid a price. What was the price? His protection was scattered about, right? Don't allow your protection to be scattered about in this hour. If the Lord is telling you to do something and you choose not to do it, that is sin. So you need to hear the voice of the Lord and obey the voice of the Lord in this hour. I know for some people it, it's, oh, I've I've been obeying and, and where is God? But don't think like that. Don't allow the enemy to fool you in that way. You must obey the voice of God. Continually obey, abide in him. Ask the Lord for a love 
love of the abide. Ask the Lord for to, to help you delight in him, to enjoy and prefer his presence and prefer walking in the light and walking in obedience, right? You want to prefer those things. So you're only, you're only, I used to say this all the time, you're only confounded or you're only um, bound by what prayer you pray or don't pray. You need to pray what you want to see. And if what you want to see is a love for abiding in Christ, then, then pray for that. And God can give you the grace for that. If you have lust in your heart, if you have um, lying or thieving in your heart, then pray against those things and then ask God for what you want. Instead of a lying heart, Lord, give me a heart of honesty. Help me to enjoy speaking the truth. Ask God, if you have lust in your heart, Lord, take away the lust and put a love for faithfulness in my heart. Put a love for obedience and truth in my heart. Put a love for, for my spouse or for you and faithfulness in my heart. If you you are having a problem in a specific area, bind up that thing, but don't forget to release and pray for grace for the other thing to come, right? Because now is the time for the abide. Now is the time for staying in Christ. It is not the time for wandering and going back to the old ways. King Zedekiah preferred the, the cheering of the people. He preferred the, the doing of his own thing, right? And because of that, now his army was scattered and he was being pursued by um, the Chaldeans. So it says, but the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king and overtook him, overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho and all his army was scattered from him. Verse nine, then they took the king and carried him up into the in unto the king of Babylon to Ribala in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. So because he preferred not to judge himself, right? God calls us to judge ourselves that we might not be judged. Um, because he chose not to judge himself, because he chose not to heed the word of Jeremiah, because he chose not to abide in the Lord and, and he chose the people and he chose the ways of the world, then that's why he came under judgment. And who did God use to judge him? He used the king of Babylon, Ribola, right? Um, he used them to judge King Zedekiah. So it says, then they took the king and carried him up unto the king of Babylon to Rebola in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. So this is a worldly judgment. This is a judgment um, on the world standard. He chose the world. He chose the enemy. Therefore, he was subject to the judgment of the enemy. He was subject to the, the ways of the enemy. He was subject to a lack of protection, right? Because this is the way that he was turned towards. Are you turned towards the world? Do you know that the world is turning away from God and towards its own judgment? It is turning away from God and it is turning towards this unquenchable fire that is about to come down. Um, verse 10, and the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. He slew also the princes of Judah in Ribola. So it says, and the king slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. And the sad part is that's one of the last things he saw because his eyes were taken out as well. It says, and the king of Babylon slew the sons. Of just, just think, you choosing your own way. Not only are you leading yourself astray, but you're leading your children astray, right? You're leading your lineage astray. You're leading your house astray. It says the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes to have to see something like that as the last thing that you're going to see, right? Your children being slain, like just, just, that is such a horrible thought. And it says that he slew also the princes of Judah in Riblah, meaning that all of them, the whole entire royal household was, was taken into that captivity, was taken into 
basically just hell right because they had chosen another way they had not chosen god and it started with king zedekiah his leadership led them to this place his leadership led them to the the fire of god the unquenchable fire basically the the rending of the heavens right it, it was his leadership. Um, verse 11, then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah and the king of Babylon bound him in chains and carried him to Babylon and put him in prison till the day of his death. So not only were his eyes, you know, not only were his children killed, but his eyes were taken out, right? Because just think of the symbolism of that. He could not see what was right in front of him. He could not see. Remember, we had listened to those scriptures and we had discussed those scriptures about seeing they do not perceive, right? Seeing, I think that was the wording, seeing do they, they don't see, right? And in hearing, they don't hear, right? They hear this word, but they don't hear it. They don't abide in it. They don't walk in it, right? We need to be able to, to hear the voice of God and abide in it and walk in it. It says, then he put out the odds of Zedekiah and the king of Babylon bound him in chains. He was bound with chains. So now he went from a, a spiritual bondage to a physical bondage. He didn't realize he was already in chains. He was in chains when he was in Judah and he was not abiding in the ways of the Lord. When he was ignoring Jeremiah, when he was throwing him down and I'm going to say threw him in a cistern, right? When he was being so evil and not listening to the words of the Lord and preferring the people he was already bound he didn't realize he was already in chains he was in the chains of the people he was in the chains of the enemy because he preferred to please the enemy he preferred to please the people rather than please god he preferred foreign gods over his god it says, then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah and the king of Babylon bound him in chains. So he was now physically able to experience the change. He was now physically able to experience the blindness. He had already been blind, right? And now he had already been bound. And now these were the physical um, of what had happened already in the spiritual. So we need to know, hey, you, you, there's some physical things that are about to happen they've already spiritually happened sin is already heaped up right people are already contrary to god the church is already falling away right and 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 it's only a matter of physically seeing it happen now that you know this point has been reached this is boiling point right it is all a matter of seeing the physical aspects take place um for what has already spiritually begun to happen it says they carried and carried him off to Babylon um, and put him in a prison till the day of his death. He had already been carried away by the ways of the world. He had already been put into prison by the enemy and his mind was bound in prison, right? Because he cared more about the ways of the world. He cared more about the people than he cared about the opinion of God. It says, and put him in a prison till the day of of his death wow so he was in that bondage he chose that bondage all the way to his death right he he chose the road that he walked on he chose this this blindness he chose this this bondage right this prison this carrying away of himself he allowed himself to be carried away because he had plenty of warnings from the man of God to let him know that this was going to happen but he chose to continue in his way he chose the world over God. Verse 12. Now in the fifth month, in the 10th day of the month, which was the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon came, Nebuchadnezzar, sorry, Nebuzar Radan. 
Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, which served the king of Babylon into Jerusalem. I know that that sentence sounds a little bit uh, broken up, but and it's not even the full complete sentence, but we'll read it one more time. Now in the fifth month, in the 10th day of the month, which was the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, which served the king of Babylon into Jerusalem. So he that this is just a um a rallying point, a point of of interest because this is saying okay, all that stuff happened to the king. Now this is when the people were taken over right this is the point where the actual application of what happened to the land the consuming fire came into the land right so this this fire which god used god used the enemies of um zedekiah and the people of jerusalem to be that consuming fire in this specific text but in our lives who knows what he will use what specifically but this is the point where the fire came into the land right so it says the captain of the guard. So this he, this was the person he was using, Nebuzaradan. Sorry, Nebuzaradan. Um, he actually came into Jerusalem on that day at that point, and um, he basically took over the land. Right, that he ended up basically coming in and infiltrating. That's what the Lord had kept telling me this was a point of infiltration right yeah he had infiltrated through the king but this is where he got to the people and this is where the the enemy entered the gates right so uh, psalm 71 verse 2 was the last verse that the lord gave me this morning in this grouping uh, it says in your righteousness deliver me and rescue me incline your ear to me and save me if if uh, uh, i don't even know yeah okay yes lord okay so if if america is babylon right if america is babylon then this is the prayer that we need to be praying, right? Because the infiltration has taken place. The The enemy is in the gates, right, of America. The enemy is in the place. So there is no denying whether or not um, the enemy has infiltrated, right? It says, but this needs to be our prayer. This needs to be our mindset because our minds should be on things above. Our, our heads should be toward the heavens looking for our help to come, right? Because if you're walking and abiding in Christ, even if the king is wrong, God can still save you. It says, in your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. We need God to save us at this point. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Not because of our righteousness. We have not been perfect. Yes, we have tried to abide in Christ, but it is Christ's perfection that we come under. Therefore, we can be perfect, right? So, it's his blood that's covering our sins. It is his sealing um, through his Holy Spirit that helps us to abide. So all of these things are his righteousness. It says, in your righteousness, deliver me. Deliver me. Cause me to be delivered and rescue me, right? We want God to rescue us. We want God to come in when he rends the heaven. Lord Jesus, come and save us, right? It says, in your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. It says, incline your ear to me and save me. Incline your ear to me and save me meaning turn your head towards me lord turn your head towards my prayer bow down thy ear oh lord right L listen to to my heart's cry right as these as the infiltration comes into the gate as the as the enemy breaches right lord come in and save me save my household rescue me 
right? Incline your ear to me and save me. God can save you in this hour. In, in the hour of infiltration, he can save you. In the hour of the breaching of the gates, he can save you. It is not too late for God to save his people. He remembers when there's one righteous left, right? He remembers and he he's not going to let it go Um He's not going to let you go unrescued if you're calling out to him. It says, in your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. It does not say in my righteousness, right? It says in your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Why God? Because you're good. You are God. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, deliver us and save us. Deliver us and rescue us. Lord, you are a righteous and you are a sovereign God. You see, you know, you know what's about to take place, God. You know what's about to come down. You have warned us and warned us and warned us. You have caused us to know your hand before it happens, God. Deliver us rescue us incline your ear to us save us in this hour lord god when your consuming fire comes in when the walls have been breached oh lord come in and save our household save our children save us rescue us god we're crying out to you god only you can save us no king can save us no president can save us no political affiliation can save us no defensive um war strategy can save us only you can save us god save your people god it doesn't matter how much we have we have stocked up and and saved up and 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 tried to prepare lord god it is only you who can save us god Save us, O oh God, when the walls have been preached, O oh Lord. We know you will, and you will present us faultless on that great day. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anyone out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than saying the words, believe them with all your heart as you confess them with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Sit on the throne of my heart, Lord. I make you my Lord and Savior. I've sat there for long enough. I've led myself for long enough. I need you to lead me. I need a Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again on the third day. I am saved. God, forgive me of my sins. They are many. Cover my sins with your blood, Lord Jesus. I repent. Help me to turn away from my sins and walk in your ways and walk in your light now. I thank you for this. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you have believed that prayer and said that prayer, then the light of God has come into you. The Holy Spirit has poured himself into you and he will lead you and guide you into all truth. And no one can break the seal that he makes on you except Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. So allow the 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 holy spirit into you to lead you and guide you into all truth he's going to show you the way he's going to cause you to go right and to go left he's going to know show you which church home to join which which um person to marry what job to take right he's going to tell you what to do with those children who are rebellious right the holy spirit can lead you and guide you into all truth in those ways and and he's going to direct Direct your path right because he knows the future for you and he knows the only way for you to be able to get in alignment 
with the will of God. So God is going to show you those things. He's going to direct your path. Just trust in him and believe in him. Um, also, the Lord wants you to join a church to be sharpened with other believers, as well as be baptized in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, um, go out and do that. Go out and listen to the voice of the Lord as he directs you to those places and those people, because it is very important that in these days and hours, you stay sharpened in the word, right? Because when it comes down, you're going to need to know what to do. And, and that comes from being sharp, being sharp in the word. So let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you into all truth. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.